Hello, welcome to day two of A Course in Miracles with Debbie Jo. Yesterday we read through the very first part of chapter one, Principles of Miracles, and then we went through lesson one together. Today we are looking at the second subtitle in chapter one, which is Revelation, Time and Miracles. Uh, the chapter name is Still the Meaning of Miracles. So, Revelation, Time and Miracles. Revelation induces complete but temporary suspension of doubt and fear. It reflects the original form of communication between God and his creations, involving the extremely personal sense of creation sometimes sought in physical relationships. Physical closeness cannot achieve it. Miracles, however, are genuinely interpersonal and result in true closeness to others. Revelation unites you directly with God. Miracles unite you directly with your brother. Neither emanates from consciousness, but both are experienced there. Consciousness is the state that induces action, though it does not inspire it. You are free to believe what you choose and what you do attests to what you believe. <clears throat> Revelation is intensely personal and cannot be meaningfully translated. That is why an attempt to describe it in words is impossible. Revelation induces only experience. Miracles, on the other hand, induce action. They are more useful now because of their interpersonal nature. In this phase of learning, working miracles is important because freedom from fear cannot be thrust upon you. Revelation is literally unspeakable because it is an experience of unspeakable love. Awe should be reserved for revelation to which it is perfectly and correctly applicable. It is not appropriate for miracles because the state of awe is worshipful, implying that one of a lesser order stands before his creator. You are, you are a perfect creation and should experience awe only in the presence of the creator of perfection. The miracle is therefore a sign of love among equals. Equals should not be in awe of one another because awe implies inequality. It is therefore an inappropriate reaction to me. It's Jesus. Jesus speaking when it's me. It's Jesus, not me. <laughs> not to be joking, Jesus. So it is therefore an inappropriate reaction to me. An elder brother is entitled to respect for his greater experience and obedience for his greater wisdom. He is also entitled to love because he is a brother and, and to devotion if he is devoted. It is only my devotion that entitles me to yours. There is nothing about me that you cannot attain. I have nothing that does not come from God. The difference between us now is that I have nothing else. This leaves me in a state which is only potential in you. No man cometh unto the Father but by me does not mean that I am in any way separate or different from you except in time, and time does not really exist. The statement is more meaningful in terms of a vertical rather than a horizontal axis. You stand below me and I stand below God. In the process of rising up, I am higher because without me, the distance between God and man would be too great for you to encompass. I bridge the distance as an elder brother to you on the one hand and as a son of God on the other. My devotion to my brothers has placed me in charge of the sonship, which I render complete because I share it. This may appear to contradict the statement, I and my father are one, but there are two parts to the statement in recognition that the Father is greater. Revelations are indirectly inspired by me because I am close to the Holy Spirit and alert to the revelation readiness of my brothers. I can thus bring down to them more than they can draw down to themselves. 
The Holy Spirit mediates higher to lower communication, keeping the direct channel from God to you open for revelation. Revelation is not reciprocal. It proceeds from God to you, but not from you to God. The miracle minimizes the need for time. In the longitudinal or horizontal plane, the recognition of the equality of the members of the sonship appears to involve almost endless time. However, the miracle entails a sudden shift from horizontal to vertical perception. This introduces an interval from which the giver and receiver both emerge further along in time than they would otherwise have been. The miracle thus has the unique property of abolishing time to the extent that it renders the interval of time and space unnecessary. There is no relationship between the time a miracle takes and the time it covers. The miracle substitutes for learning that might have taken thousands of years. It does so by the underlying recognition of perfect equality of giver and receiver on which the miracle rests. The miracle shortens time by collapsing it, thus eliminating certain intervals within it. It does this, however, within the larger temporal sequence. That's our text for today. And we're going now to lesson two, which I'm reading from Course in Miracles text workbook. Lesson two. I have given everything I see in this room on this street, from this window, in this place, all the meaning that it has for me. The exercises with this idea are the same as those for the first one. Begin with the things that are near you and apply the idea to whatever your glance rests on. Then increase the range outward. Turn your head so that you include whatever is on either side. If possible, turn around and apply the idea to what was behind you. Remain as indiscriminate as possible in selecting subjects for its application. Do not concentrate on anything in particular and do not attempt to include everything you see in a given area or you will introduce strain. Merely glance easily and fairly quickly around you trying to avoid selection by size, brightness, colour, material or relative importance to you. Take the subject simply as you see them. Try to apply the exercise with equal ease to a body or a button, a fly or a floor, an arm or an apple. The sole criterion for applying the idea to anything is merely that your eyes have lighted on it. Make no attempt to include anything particular, but be sure that nothing is specifically excluded. So again, like in the first lesson yesterday, uh, just spend approximately one minute in the morning, one minute in the evening doing that practice. Um, nothing that I see... Oh, sorry, <laughs> I'm doing yesterday's. Yesterday's was nothing that I see in this room means anything. And today, I have given everything I see in this room all the meaning that it has for me. I have given this chair all the meaning that it has for me. I have given this clothes dryer all the meaning that it has for me. I have given this picture all the meaning that it has for me. Do that for a minute, twice a day there is a process taking place. <laughs> so thank you for joining me and I look forward to sharing with you more again tomorrow. May you be blessed.